Joining me now with where he's buying is Keith Fitzgerald, principal at Fitzgerald Group. Keith, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. So stupid over soul. That's some strong words right there. I want to start with some of the stocks that you say that people should be buying right now. It's Microsoft and Apple. What's the thesis here? Why is this the right time to buy? Well, you know, always time is the question, right? It never feels like a good time to buy. But in fact, if you look at history, it suggests it's almost always a good time to buy, particularly when you have massive sell-offs like this one. If you think about it, the thesis is really not one of individual business dynamics, but one of data. 90-plus percent of all the data created in the history of humanity has been created within the last few years. Apple and Microsoft are at the absolute top of the class when it comes to managing, using, portraying, putting that that data forward in entertainment, in our lives, every which way we turn. Now's the time to lean in. If you got to buy a few shares, if you want to buy a lot of shares, that's up to you. But now's the time to step into the fight. So you're saying right now is the time to buy these. I'm looking at both of these stocks. Um, they're pretty, you know, technically expensive, both trading at 24 times forward earnings and dividends pretty, you know, I don't know what to say. It's nothing, but Microsoft at 1%, uh, Apple at a half a percent. Doesn't that kind of break the rules of the environment we're in right now? No, and I'll tell you why. You know, here's the thing. They're expensive in today's terms, but I look at the market as what are these companies going to accomplish? Apple is well on its way to becoming a trillion dollar company by 2030. I would submit that is dirt cheap based on what the company is about to accomplish. Microsoft, there is no way anybody's letting go of these legacy related contracts. The company is moving into customizable medicine, the cloud, all sorts of other things. So the valuations that we look at historically are rear view mirror oriented. I'm looking out at where these companies are going, the role that they're playing in thematic investing, structural changes in our world that are going to occur in the value that's going to be created. All right. One of the other picks is Costco. It sounds like you're feeling very constructive on consumer staples in general. Um, what's the idea here? Is the idea that, of course, we all need food and things like toilet paper, but these companies have pricing power that can then kind of push through inflation? That is a very sharp question. That's very close to my argument. Costco is about making every dollar go further. Because much of Costco's revenue comes from the membership contracts, they are able to manage their supply chain, manage their margins, manage a lot of other things better than comparable retailers. So as long as inflation remains high, as long as the consumer feels pressured, those things are going to play into how people spend money and where they do their shopping. Costco is a logical alternative. I think the company just put up great numbers this week. And, you know, if it's going to be on sale, you know what? I'm going to go to the store and not run away from it. That's an interesting idea right there. So I'm going to ask a question I asked to one of our previous guests. What are the metrics you're looking at? I'm going to go on Instagram later today, and people are going to say, look for stocks with X, Y, and Z. Is it about free cash flow? Is it about margin? What's the thing that you're looking at for stocks that can survive and possibly thrive in this current environment? Well, right now, people are going to get caught up in all the technicals. And I've been doing this 40 years, so I've seen just about every technical market you can, you can fathom. Keep it really simple right now. Whose companies are making must-have goods and services you cannot live without? Whose companies have visionary CEOs that are executing to plan? And finally, which companies are at the absolute top of their class? We call that best, not rest. This is going to be companies you use every day, you purchase every day. For example, coming back to Apple, lots of people are changing the way they buy things, where they buy things. But I've heard of very few people giving up their Apple products despite inflation, despite fear of recession.